Hallelujah. I preached last Sunday morning on limiting the unlimited God. I told you all last Sunday morning that I was going to preach last Sunday night the second part of that message. And I didn't get to because of weather, but I'm here this morning to preach the second part of that message. Is that all right? I told you last Sunday morning that when I came to Christ, I came not because anyone, uh, my mother, my father, or nobody else had explained to me, to my satisfaction, the origin of God, where He came from or who He was. The Bible simply says in Hebrews uh, that he that cometh to God must first believe that He is God. Hello, somebody. And that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Uh, If we come to God, we come to God by faith. By faith that He is God, that God exists, and that God not only exists, but the Bible says He is powerful. In fact, the Bible says that all power was given unto Him, both in heaven and in earth. Not only is God existing and powerful, uh, how many knows that God is omnipresent? He is omnipotent. He is all-knowing. He cannot be comprehended uh, at the thoughts of man's imagination can't reach out far enough to comprehend the height of God or the depth of God or the width of God or the breadth of God. He is beyond human comprehension. Uh, If he wasn't, he wouldn't be God. Amen. I understand by faith that the Bible said the worlds were framed by God. I have knowledge by faith that he set the universe into motion by his spoken word. I also realize that after he had created all things for his pleasure, there still remained one thing that God desired. So the Bible said that he pressed himself into the clay of the earth and out of that mold appeared a man created in the likeness and in the form of the God that created him. How many knows there is nothing outside of God that he needs that he cannot speak into existence he is God I came by to tell you this morning I'm not talking about Muhammad I'm not talking about Buddha I'm not talking about some uh, 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 crazy statue uh, some Baal or some statue that they set up I'm not talking about a God that is dead I'm talking about a God that after 6,000 years of creation He's still moving. He's still breathing. He's still functioning. He's still changing lives. My God, I'm talking about the God that we say we serve. His name is Jehovah. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. Beside him, there is no other. Behold, O Israel, thy God is one. He stands on stage alone. Hallelujah. There laid the mold of a man, lifeless and motionless. But the Bible said that God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and Adam became a living soul he become what God intended for him to become are y'all hearing me a living soul living not dead can I tell you that man is born of a woman and few days the Bible said he's full of trouble and soon he's like a a flower that springs up and then fades away but can I tell you Jesus said I come not into the world but to bring everlasting life the thief cometh to steal kill and destroy but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly what God wants to do is to take men and women out of their dead sins and their trespasses and breathe the Holy Ghost into their life and where they become living moving functioning body of Jesus Christ hallelujah Adam was created in holiness 
and righteousness in the image and the likeness of God. He walked, the Bible said, with the word of the Lord in the cool of the day. He had understanding. He had knowledge. He didn't question uh, uh, who God was or if he existed. He had seen him. He had heard him. He felt him. The Bible says he was covered by him. For in the beginning, all that Adam needed was God. Are y'all hearing me? God had created everything uh, for Adam and there he stood. All he needed was God. When he took a stroll in the cool of the day, there was God strolling with Adam. All Adam needed was God. Oh, but through the sinful fall of Adam man became unwise unknowing lacking authority it is in this fallen estate that mankind now questions the existence of God can I tell you that's why we deal now with the atheist Uh, that says there is no God Uh, that's why we're questioned Uh, our Christianity are questioned by evolutionists uh, that say nobody ever uh, created this world Uh, uh, Adam's out there somewhere uh, exploded in a big bang theory uh, and some of us were fish uh, and some of us were monkeys uh, and we evolved into human beings Uh, I came by to tell the evolutionists uh, and I came by to tell the atheists that in the beginning God nobody hit by him nobody around him in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth it wasn't a big bang theory this Bible says God stepped out into nothing and spoke the world into existence hallelujah I want to remind you that it wasn't God that moved. It's mankind that moved. We question. I don't want to get in trouble. That's why the abortionists have their way. Eighty-something kids a week in Knoxville die. Innocent blood is shed because an abortionist says, and this is the whole meaning behind it, an abortionist says, there is no God, so there is no meaning of life. Hello, somebody. Since there is no God, we're never going to have to face a judgment. There is no greater power, so we're not going to have to face the judgment. The atheist says there is no God, but yet waste their life fighting against something they don't even believe exists. They mention the name of God more than some Christians do. Are y'all hearing me? If I didn't believe that Coca-Cola was a was a was a was a drink, how many knows I wouldn't go to the store to buy it? And if you didn't believe there was a God, why fight against something you don't believe even exists? But can I tell you when hell comes, when death wraps them up and they end up in hell, they won't be one atheist burning in the lake of fire because when they see him come and they stand before him they'll know within their heart there is a God and they should have turned toward him God's in the same place he's always been he's doing the same thing he's always done y'all hear me his characteristics are the same as they've always been hallelujah I'm going to preach here in just a minute In the beginning, God, hallelujah, Job found himself telling of God when his three friends came to him. Are y'all with me this morning? Help me preach just a minute. I'm going somewhere. Uh, Job found himself. They came to accuse Job of sin. Surely, Job, all of this is coming upon you because of sin. After the accusations were made, Job spoke up and said to them, let me speak now for myself, and then you can mock on. I want to say something to all the mockers of Christianity today. Let me tell you about my God, and then you can mock on. 
Let me testify. Give me an opportunity to tell you where God brought me from. Drug addicted, alcohol abuse. Come on, somebody. A life of violence and crime. But when I walked into Macedonia Baptist Church in 1986 on Easter Sunday morning, what AA couldn't do for me, what drug rehab could not do, one trip to an altar at the foot of this God, him laying his hand on me, he set me free of drugs, set me free of alcohol, brought me out of the crime scene and established my goings. I heard David say, he's picked me up out of the miry clay, set my feet up on a solid rock. Mock on. Say he don't exist. Say he don't exist because somebody came to an altar and went away and still sinned. But there's been many that came to the cross and walked away and quit sinning. Y'all ain't helping me. Woo! So Joe finds himself. He's sitting in the ashes and he's cutting himself with a pot shirt. He starts talking about God to those three accusing friends. You sinned, Job. You must have felt God in some way. God's bringing these judgments on you because of sin. Job begins to say to him, let me talk for a minute. And when I get done talking, you can mock on if you want to. Mock the condition I'm in. Look like it, God ain't with me. Why, if God was with somebody, why they got to go through t- turmoil? If God's with somebody, why do we face pain? If God's with somebody, why does bad things happen to good people? Job said, if you want to mock on, mock on. But before you do I'm going to say something I've got some things to testify about Job says God created the heavens and the earth he places the stars in the skies and causes them to burn with fervent heat Job says he controls the signs of the seasons and turns water uh, winter into spring he set the 12 zodiac signs up in the sky my God the Bible says sets on the circle of the earth and beholds the inhabitants like grasshoppers jumping around. God sits on the circle of the earth and watches us. His eye is on the righteous. His ear is inclined to them. If I pray he hears me. If I look to him he's looking at me. If I reach for him he reaches for me. If I draw nigh to him he draws nigh to me because he's not a God out there somewhere he's a present help in the time of need my God Isaiah 44 verse 24 thus saith the Lord thy redeemer he that formeth thee from the womb I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, and that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. The God we serve is not a puny God, folks. Our God is a great God of the universe, yet every one of us can know Him in a personal relationship with Christ. Can I tell you, think about that for a minute, Pastor Jerry, of the God that slung the stars into existence, the God that that made the sun to shine and the moon to be a shadow of the shining light of the sun. The God that met, put the earth on an axis and began to spin it with the tip of his finger and a, a, a 6,000 years later, the earth is still spinning. This God that stepped out into darkness and said, let there be light and light started traveling at 186,000 miles a second. 6,000 years later, light is still traveling by the word of the Lord this God that holds the stars in his hand this God that numbered every star in the sky and knows when when one falls this same God loves me and you enough that he wants to have a personal relationship with you why would God want a personal relationship relationship with me I'm nobody 
I failed too much. I failed too much. I've done too much wrong. I've sinned too much. You may be thinking to yourself, but that's who he, he came for. That's who he loved. He wouldn't be much of a God when Adam fell if he just left him in that fallen estate. But he came to where Adam was. I'm going to preach. Is that all right? Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could discover through faith this great God that we say we serve? We've never come to the end of him. We've never even dawned who he really is. I mean, he's powerful. He's all-knowing. Listen to this. Job did. While he was sitting in a pile of ashes, adversity and sickness had taken over his body. While death waited for him, he had been forsaken by his wife. My God, curse God and die, Job. Give up, man. He had been wounded by his friends. Job discovered this great God. Ain't it amazing that sometimes God has to get us alone? Are you with me this morning? Sometimes God has to get us alone in order for us to discover who God really is. Amen. Sometimes folks have got to walk on from us. Sometimes our family forsakes us. Sometimes we feel like we're all alone. Sometimes we got to get down on rock bottom before we can have God to reach down and pick us up. Are y'all hearing me this morning? I came by to preach to you and tell you that it's in those times when you're all alone. It's in those times of ashes. It's in those times of pot shirts. It's in those times when they've rolled the coffin up beside of you and death is waiting on you when infection is in your body when sickness is taken over it's in those times that you'll find out God is just a prayer away he's a whisper away he doesn't leave us he's with us always hallelujah it's in those times praise God So Job discovers this great God, this old ancient man of God, while being questioned by his so-called friends, bleeding sores from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Job 21 verse 3, suffer me now to speak. And after I have spoken, you can walk on. You can say what you want to. Job said in chapter 29, I'll tell you who I am. I am who I am because of God. I want to read something to you. Let me find it right quick. I am who I am because of God. Yes, sir. Listen to this. When I wash my steps with butter... And the rocks poured me out rivers of oil. When I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me. This is Job speaking of himself. When the young men saw me, they hid themselves, and the aged men arose and stood up. The princes refrained from talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me speak, then it blessed me. When the eye saw me, it gave witness to me of who I was in the Lord. Don't be accused of me of being nobody. I'm somebody because the hand of God was on me. That's what Job is saying. Listen to this. He goes on to say, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless and him that had none to help him, the blessed of him that was ready to perish came upon me. I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind. I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor. And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. He said, after all of that, I'm trying to find out who 
God really is. And so now Job is testifying, sitting in the ashes and the potsherds, scraping his sores of his body. And he goes on to say this, I'll tell you who I am, but anything I am, it's only by God. When you come to the New Testament, you hear the Apostle Paul say, I am what I am, simply by the grace of God. I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee of the high sect. Concerning the law, I was spotless. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying this morning? But Paul said, I count all of that as dung. None of that matters. It ain't worth anything. But on the road to Damascus, a light started shining out of heaven. I knew the law. I knew the word of God. But I did not know the God of that word. I'm telling you this morning, there's one thing to know the shepherd's psalm. There's another thing to know the shepherd of the psalm. And and Paul said on that road, a great light started shining. And I heard the voice of this omnipotent God as he spoke to me. And when he spoke to me, it struck me down. God has a way of bringing us to the place he can testify. Job said, I chose out their way. I set chief. I dwelled as a king in the army as one that comforted those that were mourning. Get this. Job says, I'm everything I am because of God. Don't accuse me if you don't know where I've been. Don't accuse me just because I'm going through something. Don't say God ain't with me just because I'm struggling. Don't say God ain't with me. Can I tell you something? You ought to turn your TV off. When all these Johnny-come-lately prosperity preachers come along. I ain't going to get too many amens on that. Some of y'all support their ministries. Uh, Y'all to turn it off when they tell you that when you get Jesus, you'll never have a problem. If you had faith, your bank account would be full. If you had faith, everything's a bed of roses. Well, I'd like to know what they did with Jesus. He said the foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I'd like, to know, I'd like to hear their argument on, did Jesus have faith? Was Jesus right with the Lord, right with his Father? Anybody think that Jesus was in the will of his Father? Hallelujah. I'd like to see what they do with that. Tell you who I am. Then, after everything that Job said, I'm, I'm coming to a close right here, but you've got to hear this. While Job was speaking to his friends, God was standing over in the shadows. Listening to Job talk. And after everything Job told about God. I mean, after everything he told, he knew about God. Ain't it funny that when you come to everything you know about God, he shows up a different way than what you knew him to be. He'll show you something completely different. Job standing or God standing over in the shadows listening. And God begins to ask Job in Job 38. Job, I've got some questions to ask you. And I'm going to ask you in front of your friends. These so-called accusatory friends that's coming to you. Job, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. That's, that's my favorite verse in the entirety of the Bible. God answered Job out of the middle of a storm. You don't know how many times I flipped my Bible over in the middle of a storm and read that scripture. God answered Job out of the middle of that storm. Sometimes I hear God the clearest in the middle of the storm. Y'all ain't helping me. God answers Job and said, you think you got me figured out, Job? Yeah, I think I got you figured out pretty good. Well, Job, let me ask you some questions. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Job, what 
are you talking about? You don't even know what you're talking about. You, you, you're darkling counsel by words of no knowledge. Gird up now thy loins like a man, Job, for I will command of thee or demand of thee and answer thou me this. Where was thou, Job, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measurements thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it, Job? Where was you at when I created the world? Where, where's the ruler or, or, the, or, or the tape measure that I used, Job, uh, to measure out the earth and the seas? Uh, where was you at, Job? Whereupon are the foundations of the earth fastened? Everything that's built has to have foundation. Can I ask you, Job? Have you found the place where the foundations of the earth are? Job, did you notice that when I created the earth, I created it without foundations? There's no place it's tied down. It's floating in atmosphere, Job. God help me. Who laid the cornerstone of it, Job? See, some of y'all this don't matter to. I'm talking about our God, though. Hey, Job, when the morning stars sung together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, hey, Job, what was the tune of the song? What was the note that we sung it in? What was the rhythm of the music when the sons of God got together in creation past and sung the song of the morning? I can tell you, Sister Mountain, you've never hit that note. You've never hit that tune. We've never heard that rhythm. But that song that started way back then, 6,000 years, when the angels get around the throne, they're still singing that same song, using that same no, come on somebody where was she at Job when the stars sung together hey Job let me ask you this if you've got me figured out tell me who shut up the sea with doors that it couldn't break forth Woo! as if it had issued out of a woman's womb who put doors on the sea, Job? Have you found them yet? Have you ever been to the ocean and seen doors? I I'm preaching. Uh, when I, hey, Job, when I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and the thick darkness, a swaddling band for it. Job, where was you at? Job, have you commanded the morning since thy days or caused the day spring to know its place? Job, have you commanded the morning sun when it will arise or when it will go down? No, Job, you haven't. Job, have you took hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it? Hey, Job, let me ask you this. Where's the springs? That the oceans are fed from. God I could run right now. Hey Job have you walked the depth of the oceans to find out the path of it? Hey Job has the gates of death been opened unto you? Have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hey, Job, hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hailstones that I've got reserved up? Man, that's powerful, ain't it? Hey, Bo, you can play it being awful good, son. But you ain't come to the end of God yet. In all of my anointing that I've had over the years, I've never been allowed to walk into the treasure where God stores up snow. Did you know that scientist says that from the first snowflake that ever fell, there has never been another snowflake fell like that one. Every snowflake has been different. B 
billions and billions and trillions of snowflakes that have fallen and God has them all in the treasure. How's he cooled that thing to keep them from defrosting? Job. I mean, when God created the world, he built a treasure and stuck all the snow in there and said, now don't defrost. I know some of y'all ain't never heard this. <laughs> Woo! I feel like shouting. Have you seen the treasures of the hell? Stones. Which I've reserved against the time of trouble and against the day of battle and war. It tells me that God has a treasure of hell. Stones reserved that when that there must be going to be a battle where God releases the treasure, sweeps out the treasure of hell that'll beat upon men. The wrath of God. By the way, Job, let me ask you this. Which way is the light parted? Does it go to the east or to the west? How about the north or south, Job? Who divides the water above the clouds so that it rains in one area, but it stays dry in another? Hey, Job, let me ask you something. I'll quit when God tells me to. Job, let me ask you something. Out of whose womb came the ice? How about the frost of heaven? Who's produced it? What about the sweet fragrances that you smell? Who came up with that aroma? Who created the wing of an eagle? And turned around and created the wing of a hummingbird. Who created the roar of a lion? But created the purr of a kitten in the same family. Who can number the clouds? Job except for God who can take bottles and bottle up tears of every human that's ever shed a tear and reserve those bottles until the day of judgment Job who done it all when the dust when the dust turns into hardness and the clods of dirt cleave fast together. Job, when it's all said and done, who will still be standing? The flower, the flower fadeth, and the earth passes away. But Job... The word of the Lord remaineth forever. When all the prophets are silenced, when all the gifts are stopped being used, when all of us quit speaking in tongues, when all of the praise and worship stops being resounded, when every preacher folds his Bible up and has no more sermons to preach, when every musician cuts off their instrument, lays down their guitar, shuts off the piano, lays their drumsticks down. Whenever preacher folds his handkerchief for the last time, Job, who will still be standing? Who are you going to cleave to? I come by to preach to somebody this morning. When the doctors look at you eyeball to eyeball and say you're eat up with cancer and there is no hope. 
And your family can only go so far. And your friends will soon fade out of the room. Who will be there? When your drunk friends have left your side. When your pill-popping buddies that think you're the party, the life of the party. When they're all dead from overdose. I'm preaching now. When all the good time Charlies and the easy women are gone. Who's going to be there, Job? God he'll be standing somewhere in the shadows you can find Jesus I may not be the greatest preacher and I know I'm not there's other preachers in this house better than me but I know one thing if I don't know anything else I know I've never come to the end of God. I've never figured Him out. But the longer I live for Him, is the more I love Him. And it's not because of what He does for me as much as it is because of who He is. Same girl. I touched the hill.